that was the great Roger Federer double bageling Gaudio at the 2005 Masters Cup. However, in this video we will go over the total number of head-to-head -head victories against one opponent without losing. This dominance is more than one point, one set, or one match. But how many? Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. We are talking about a minimum of 10 matches without losing. If you are thinking the three greatest players of all time make up this list, then you would be right. Djokovic, Federer, and Nadal frustrated so many players on tour, and they made it look easy at times. Andy Murray was able to get on this list, along with another surprise player. This video will cover the last 20 years since that was when I started watching tennis and not cover the older generations. I wasn't around back then, but guys like Bjorn Borg, Lendl, and John McEnroe would have made it on the list, dominating guys that I never heard of. I have a great respect for the older generation who paved the way for current and future players, so my apologies to them for not covering them in this video. You cannot be serious! At number 10, we have Zitsi Pass with a 10-0 record versus Damon Noor. Both guys are active players in their mid-20s, so this has potential to get really lopsided. Why has Zitsi Pass dominated this matchup? Zitsi Pass can get free points with his serve or set up the 1-2 serve forehand combo. Damon Noor doesn't have a big serve, so Zitsi Pass can get into points easier. Damon Noor can beat a lot of guys by grinding them out once the point gets to neutral. However, this doesn't work most of the time for Zitsi Pass since Sissy Pass can wait for a good ball to really attack it with his forehand. Sometimes just his power from the forehand is enough to win him the point. This 10th win over Damon Nord, Zitsi Pass won his 10th ATP title in Los Cabos in 2023. Tied at number 10 is Nadal with a 10-0 record against Paul Henry Matu. Matu, like a lot of losing players on this list, was a good pro player, but against the legends of the sport, you have to be great because you're under pressure almost every single point. Nadal's defense led to a lot of unforced errors as players had to hit harder or go closer to the lines to win points. Given the opportunity, Nadal could unleash his forehand. It wasn't the power with his forehand, but some of the angles and obviously the high bounce on clay is why he was so dominant. Also tied at number 10 was Andy Roddick against Jurgen Meltzer. Roddick put the beat down on a lot of players with his monster serve and consistency from the baseline. The cool fact about Meltzer is that he is the only player to beat Djokovic from two sets down. That happened at the 2010 French Open. At number 9, we have Andy Murray with a 11-0 head-to-head record against Feliciano Lopez. Lopez likes to bomb the serve, then hit a big forehand and come in. Unfortunately, Murray has a great return and hits great passing shots. Murray can get depth off good serves, putting pressure on his opponent immediately. On key points, Murray has no issues grinding it out from the baseline and extracting the error. Just a horrible matchup for Lopez, which is why Murray was 11-0 against him. Also tied at number 9 with an 11-0 record was Roddick over Tommy Robredo. Roddick won 27 sets to Robredo's one set, which came in the 2008 Masters 1000 match in Rome. Clay was Robredo's best chance to beat Roddick, but Andy did a great job with his serve and putting pressure on the Robredo backhand. Roddick was able to win this tight tiebreak with some good volleys at the net to close it out, not something he is really known for. In the last of the three-way tie for number 9, we have Ferrer dominating Fonini. Fognini, when playing his best, is one of the best shot makers in the game. Ferrer, with his ferocious defense, no pun intended, made things difficult for Fognini. The great depth in getting every ball back was something Fognini couldn't handle and was why Ferrer was a top 5 and top 10 player for many years. I feel like his career is often underappreciated because he didn't win a major. I think he did his best with the skills he was given. Not every player can win a major, especially in the GOAT era. He does hold the record for most ATP matches won without winning a major. Ferrer would win the 2015 Rio Final, 6-2, 6-3. Tied at number 8 with a 12-0 record, we got Djokovic against Raonic. This one is pretty simple. We got a dominant server versus the greatest returner of all time. Once the point is neutral, there's a clear advantage to Djokovic. He can move the ball around the court, getting in an advantageous position and forcing the error out of Raonic. Milos was a great player in his day, but simply no match for Djokovic. Also tied at number 8, we had Djokovic versus Andreas Seppi. Seppi almost had him at the 2012 French Open. Seppi was up two sets to none before Joker came back to win in five. Also tied at number eight, we have Tomas Burdick versus Kevin Anderson. These guys played 12 times in three years from 2012 to 2014. I couldn't find many highlights, but it seemed that Burdick had little issue with Anderson's serve, and then once in the point, he would dominate with his forehand. Most of the time with big servers, you just need to get a decent return back and you'll be fine. Easier said than done, of course. At number 7, we got Federer with a 13-0 record versus Feliciano Lopez. Fed dominated a lot of guys with one-handed backhands. Fed could usually attack that backhand with his serve and forehand to win points. 
Lopez had a match point in a classic match at Madrid 2011, but Federer was able to save it with a nace, eventually winning the match a few points later. So close, but that is the heartbreak at times with tennis. For number 6, we got Djokovic 14-0, 33-0 in sets against Jeremy Shardy. Shardy had a big serve in forehand with a backhand that was pretty weak. Joker could get the serve back deep, which caused issues seen in these two points. Yeah. And the back Joker end that can be. Tied for number six with a 14 0 record, we got Federer dominating Cole Schreiber. Cole Schreiber had wins against Djokovic, Nadal, and Murray, but couldn't beat Fed. Federer just had all the answers when they played. Another one-handed backhand player that Fed owned. For number 5, Federer was 15-0 against Jarko Niemann. Niemann was a crafty lefty but had a pretty weak serve and Federer had no issues attacking that. I would say the serve and the fact that there really wasn't anything Niemann could hurt Federer with was the cause for this lopsided matchup. Once Federer got control of the point, his power and finesse would win it. Looking at these points, you can see how ruthless Federer was on return. To avoid this, Niemann likely had to take something off the first serve to avoid getting his second serve attacked. 15-0 is crazy, but there are four higher lopsided head-to-heads. Number four, Federer vs. Eugenie, 17-0. This had to be Eugenie every time he saw he was facing Federer again. They actually got to play each other at each of the four majors, which is definitely something Eugenie wished he could have avoided. During their Wimbledon matchup, Eugenie asked the Royal Box for help. Only a few guys had answers against Federer on grass. In their last matchup, they played a five-set match at the 2017 US Open. Number 3, Federer 17-0 against Ferrer. Ferrer was a brick wall that Federer had no trouble hitting through. He was able to win points at the net. made his opponents earn it and that wasn't an issue for Federer. Number 2, Nadal 18-0 against Gasquet. The last set Gasquet won was an epic back in 2008. He's got it. Gasquet lost the next two sets in that match 6-2, 6-1. Eight of their 18 matches were on clay. Beating Nadal on clay is probably the toughest thing to do in tennis. <laughs> It's a break for the defending champion, the world number one here. He's got it. That's a suit. Five-time champion. And number one, we got Djokovic with an absurd 19-0 record against Monfils. Their first match came as teenagers with an injured Djokovic winning 7-5 in the fifth set. A close encounter, but they had a closer meeting in the semifinal of Dubai in 2020. Monfils actually had three match points in the second set tiebreak. He had two serves to win the match, and it looked like he was going to close it out. Gail Monfils poised here for one of the wins of his career. So close to victory. I'm hoping for another matchup soon to see if we will see 20-0.